Hey everyone, today we are going to look at another important organism, Haemophilus, of which Haemophilus influenzae is the most important species. It is a small cocobacilli and it is pink in color or gram negative. Its hands and legs have been tied up, indicating it is non motile. It is a non sporing organism. It exists in two forms a non capsulated form and a capsulated form. The non capsulated form is a commensal in the respiratory tract, that means it is normally found there and it can cause a localized infection in certain conditions. The capsulated form is extremely dangerous and it causes an invasive type of infection. The most virulent capsulated strain is that of serotype B. Hem means blood loving. Hemophilus requires factors 5 or NAD and factor 10 or hematin for its growth. However, it is a very delicate organism and is easily killed by contact with heat, cold, disinfectant and drying. Let us look at what makes Haemophilus so strong in our body or its virulence factors. The first one is its capsular polysaccharide which helps the organism to resist phagocytosis. The second is the presence of tiny fimbriae which help the organism attach to our respiratory epithelium. The third factor is the presence of membrane proteins. These help in the adhesion and invasion of our cells. The fourth and the last factor is the production of IgA1 protease. Immunoglobulin A plays a crucial role in the immune functions of our mucous membranes. This protease destroys this antibody and makes us more susceptible to infection. Coming to the pathogenesis of Haemophilus, it enters our body through the respiratory route, that is through the nose and the mouth. It then travels to the lungs, from which it invades the epithelium and enters the bloodstream. It then spreads to other parts of the body. Haemophilus affects individuals of different age groups in different ways. In infants under 2 years of age, it causes meningitis and pneumonia, which can very often be fatal. In older children, that is between 2 to 10 years of age, it causes acute epiglossitis and otitis media, which are localized infections that are caused most often by the non-capsulated strains. Its characteristic findings are a cherry red color of the epiglottis and a thumb sign on the x-ray. In adults, it causes COPD, bronchitis and sinusitis along with suppurative lesions such as septic arthritis, most of which again are localized. For the laboratory diagnosis of Haemophilus, we can use blood, CSF, sputum, pus or any other aspirates depending on the site of the infection. It is important to remember that Haemophilus is a delicate organism and is easily killed by low temperature so never refrigerate these samples. On gram staining, we can see pink or gram negative cocobacilli. For serotyping, slide agglutination tests is preferred. To culture haemophilus, if we use blood agar, very scanty growth is obtained. This is due to the lack of factor 5, which is trapped inside the RBCs. To make the media more favorable for the growth of haemophilus, we heat the blood agar to obtain the brown colored chocolate agar. Haemophilus is very happy now because both factor 5 and 10 are available. To enhance the growth of haemophilus even more, we make a streak of a hemolytic bacteria, one which destroys the RBCs such as Staphylococcus aureus across the dish. This releases higher concentration of factor 5, so the haemophilus colonies thrive and grow much larger near this streak, while those away from it are much smaller. This phenomena is called satellitism which means 
they grow close to the Staphylococcus aureus trick, just like the earth and the moon. For the treatment of invasive infections, we use cephalosporins. Remember, C for capsulated and C for cephalosporin. For the non-capsulated strains, infection is quite mild. Remember, Q for quinolones and M for macrolides. For chemoprophylaxis in exposed healthcare workers or family members of the patients, we can use rifampicin. To prevent infection, vaccines are used. They are prepared using the most virulent strain that is type B polysaccharide. It is usually given to children 18 to 24 months of age. Two doses are required at two monthly intervals. I hope this video helps you remember everything important about haemophilus. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.